Are you ready to kickstart your week with some dirt slinging and tire slaying action motorsports radio that packs the biggest guests? Hi, right, Ken Block here. Hey, my name's Jolene Van Butte. What's up, Brian Deegan here. Vaughn Ginn Jr. here. They've been thrown into one show that has broken down the barriers of what a motorsports radio show should be. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with support from General Tire, KMC Wheels, Dirtfish, Gibson Exhaust, and MTX Audio, with your host, who also happens to spend his weekends flying 800 horsepower trucks through the dirt, Jim Beaver. When was the last time you saw an off-road or rally driver begging to get behind the wheel of a NASCAR Indy car? Yep, not happening, but you sure see these pavement racers begging to drive our cars. And his partner in crime every week, a self-proclaimed Canadian moto chick who was jumping triples and taking podiums before most guys even learned to ride. Amy Hood. No one knows how to say my last name. Like, is it really that hard? Amy Hood, like I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to join us as we take you through a motorsports ride like no other. Here is the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other, Jim Beaver. Good morning. Welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And today, we have a very special presenting sponsor for today's Down and Dirty Radio Show, as well as this week's Project Action Podcast. My good friends at Impact Racing, impactraceproducts.com, the best and safest uh, safety gear in motorsport. I wear their helmet, their driver's suit, their gloves, their shoot their underwear their socks their shoes head to toe i am impact and uh when i race in the race cars and they had me out at the indy 500 this past weekend for qualifying weekend we got a ton to talk about as far as that goes uh man it was uh i don't want to say a life-changing experience but it definitely makes you view a motorsports a bit differently we'll be talking about that a lot today including one of our big guests we got alexander rossi 2016 Indy 500 winner. He's on the show. This is an interview I recorded out at Indianapolis Motor Speedway right before qualifying. We're going to have Alexander Rossi on. We've got Katie Osborne, my good friend, old GRC partner in crime. Yep, that Katie Osborne. You see her on Torque. You see her on Mikam Auto Auction. You see her at Snowcross. Now she's doing some IndyCar pit reporting. Ran into her out there. She's on the line. We got Lucas Oil off road winner Ryan Beat. He is calling in. And then we got Red Bull GRC podium finisher Steve Arpin on the line. All that and more coming at you today on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race ready off road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. As certain as the sun rises and sets around the world, OTSFF Group is dedicated to providing flexible, comprehensive, and reliable transportation solutions. Air transportation, ocean freight, ground transportation, or a combination of services. We offer innovative and custom-built packages specifically designed to meet your transportation needs. OTSFF Group has been keeping shipments moving globally for nearly two decades. OTSFF Group, flexible logistic services designed for you. For more information at OTSFF Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, Jim Beaver here flying solo today. That is right. My partner in crime, Ms. Amy Hood. Um, she's uh, taking a little vacation, right? Uh, so life is always a vacation for Amy Hood. No, seriously, she got some family stuff going on, like a family reunion of sorts. And uh, so I was in Indianapolis. She's doing that. I had a lot to talk about. Boom, we're flying solo. She'll be back next week, though. Always looking forward to her having her back on the line. Um, but uh, uh, some big, big news coming out of uh, motorsport. I know uh, when I was back there at the Indy 500, it was, um, it was all over the paddock. Um, in the garage area, everybody was talking about it, but, um, Nikki Hayden, um, one of, uh, one of the best, uh, super bike racers on the planet, uh, former MotoGP champion. Um, he passed away, um, and not due to a motorcycle accident. He was actually, uh, riding a road bike and, uh, got hit by a car and, uh, um, ended up going to the hospital. He was in intensive care for a few days. I, I know things looked bleak from the beginning. Um, sounded like he had some trauma to the brain. And uh, we ended up losing him yesterday. And uh, definitely a heartbreaker. I know, uh, um, man, I was a massive Nikki Hayden fan, massive MotoGP fan. Um, and uh, it was, uh, I don't know, just a shocking young guy, great shape. Um, and, and you know, he <laughs> rides motorcycles at two, over 200 miles an hour for a living. And, uh um, and then, you know, he's riding a bicycle and that's what takes him out. Just, uh, definitely, definitely tough, but, uh, thoughts, prayers, uh, going out to, uh, Nikki Hayden's family and friends. I didn't know Nikki personally. I do have some mutual friends though. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody just, uh, uh, I guess the guy lit up a room when he was around, you know, and, and definitely a heartbreaker, young, talented guy, uh, very well-spoken and, um, uh, moving on to, uh, uh, greater places, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's about all we can say, but, uh, you know, Nikki Hayden, uh, passing away, definitely thoughts and prayers, uh, you know, to anybody, uh, anybody close to him. So, um, yeah, moving on, I guess, uh, something a little bit brighter, uh, our friends at Polaris Razor, and then we had our boys at Warfighter made on, um, they are, uh, you know, they, they have their big salute to heroes program going on right now through a Memorial weekend. And, uh, you know, and, and basically this is uh, to drive money and, uh, and donations to the boys at Warfighter Made. They've got some giveaways going on. You can go and uh, make a donation uh, through that website uh, set up for, uh, you know, the Razor Salute to Heroes. And uh, you make a donation through there. You get entered to uh, win some prizes. Um, and, you know, and, and one of them is, ends up being a Razor put together by the Diesel Brothers. But there's a lot of Razor brand partners involved. They're putting up some great, uh, some great giveaways, great promotions. And uh, you can get involved in that. Just go to the website, make a donation. Boom, you're instantly, you know, entered to uh, – you're instantly entered uh, to uh, get in on uh, on the drawings. And uh, anytime you're posting up the next week or two on social media, use that hashtag RazorLife. Every time you use the hashtag RazorLife in a post, uh, they're giving away $5 uh, to Warfighter Made, Polaris Razor is. So, uh, you know, you're talking tens of thousands of posts times 5 bucks. It's a big chunk of change going to Warfighter Made to keep these boys in business and supporting our troops uh, when they get home from uh, overseas. So, uh, Razor Salute to Heroes, that's going on. Definitely 
help out, get in on it. It's uh, it's definitely a, a big deal and something that's near and dear to to my heart. That's for sure. And um, super stoked for uh, Polaris to to be doing that. Also got Project Action going on. Last week we had P Rod, Paul Rodriguez, one of the best street skaters of all time. He was my guest on Project Action. That's sitting there. It's out on iTunes right now. Podcast One, my website. You can download it, stream it, listen to it. When you do, make sure and go over to uh, uh, iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to Project Action, as well as the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And if you leave a review on iTunes, if you leave your Twitter, Instagram, at username in the body of the review, down at the bottom, I will check it out, and I'll give you a follow on social media. So lots of good things happening over there on Project Action. This week, um, we are doing a big Indy 500 edition of Project Action. You know, we bounce around with musicians, actors sports racing and a whole lot more i had so much content from the indy 500 we're plugging some into this show and we're plugging a whole lot into that show and uh, we're putting together some uh, some really good indy 500 content at least i think so um but um should uh, should be uh should be a ton of fun to put that podcast together I, you know I, i've got some interviews with john andretti uh, obviously, we've got this one with Alexander Rossi we're airing today. I've got a bunch of stuff to go and plug into that uh, into that podcast, and and definitely, definitely looking forward to putting that together. I think if you're a fan of the Indy 500, you're going to really like it, and uh, it uh, it truly is. It's uh, Indy 500. If you haven't been there, you know, and and I posted something on uh, on my private Facebook. I guess I ought to just read it to you guys, right? Because it, it, I was thinking, I'm like, ah, how do we approach this? How how do I talk about um, you know what Indy 500 is and this and that? So this was in my private Facebook. I use an alias, so you guys aren't going to find it. Um, but I posted this just you know friends, and it was something I was thinking yesterday, and I was kind of decompressing after four days at Indy. So you know, this is this is kind of this is kind of where I was thinking after leaving Indy. And this is a kid who's never been to the Indy 500 before. I'm an open wheel fan. Um, but, you know, this is kind of where my head was at. So I go, uh, so I basically opened up and said, so back home after four days at Indy, you think you know motorsport and then you go to Indy. Literally the biggest race in the world. And if you disagree, all you have to do is step one foot in Indianapolis Motor Speedway and you will feel it whether the cars are on track or not. It's not about the glitz and glamour like Formula One, and it's not about the overly commercialized, bright and fancy logos you see at Daytona, and it's not about the 24 hours of pain and sleep loss it takes to compete at Le Mans. There's something pure about Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the month of May. The history will humble you. It's why the greats of yesteryear still come back every year. It's why drivers at almost 50 can't seem to let it go. And it's why Grand Prix champions worth hundreds of millions of dollars skip the Monaco Grand Prix and go to middle America in May. It's why every young driver in this country wants to race there. The Indy 500 is where racing heroes are made, and it's where people... It's where even people who have zero interest in motorsports can be brought to their butt in a seat at the Speedway for 500 miles to watch. The Indy 500 and Indianapolis Motor Speedway are special. And once you walk on a pit road and get to stand on those bricks, you'll understand it. I thought I did, and I sure didn't. The only thing I can even compare it to is when I step foot in the White House. You get a chill and know that this is a place of greatness, and a feeling like that can only re- be replicated a few places on Earth. Now, I'm telling you guys here, like Jim B, that, that was something I posted on my private social media. I don't normally share that stuff, but um, I, I thought it was relevant here. Like, seriously, it's humbling. Going to uh, going to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I can't explain it, you know. And I'm an off-road guy. I'm an action action sports and action motorsports guy who has been a long time, you know, IndyCar fan. We we don't talk IndyCar and open wheel racing a lot on the show, um, you know. But I, I'm a massive fan. I followed it. Had the opportunity with my good friends at Impact to go out there and do all these interviews and radio, and uh, I just fell in love with the place, man. It, it's seriously, it's you. You hear people talk about the Indy 500 and Indy, and you don't understand it until you're there. I'm telling you, man, it's – I know it's a bucket list thing for a lot of people. Don't make it a bucket list thing. Make it a now thing. Like, seriously, next year, book your ticket and go. Uh, you and, and the problem you're going to have is, is once you do it, you're going to be like me, and you're going to – it's like crack. Ah, I got to go next year. I got to go next year. I, I got to have it again. I got to have it again. And I understand now. I get it, you know, and it's like people go, oh, why, why are these people um, – you know, why, why do these people, you know, why do they have to go every year? You know, and you just see all these greats and it's like, oh, they're all, um, uh, you know, you, it's just, I don't know. It's hard to explain, you know, it's, uh, um, 
it's just one of those things. You got to be there. You got to feel it. You got to experience it. I was fortunate to pretty much have an all access pass back there, and I got to walk around and, and meet drivers, and you know, and I've known a lot of them, um, but uh, definitely got to uh, to meet some more, make some new friends, and uh, yeah, I can tell you, it's definitely going to be something uh, I'm going to go back and do uh, each and every uh, each and every year. That's uh, that's for certain at this point. So uh, yeah, had a lot of fun. Got to see my good friend Katie Osborne. I haven't seen her in the flesh in a couple of years. We still chat on the phone and text once in a while, but uh, she'll be calling into the show today. Uh, coming up next, we got Steve Arpin in our GRC Curtain Call segment, and uh, it's going to be fun to catch up with Steve. I actually talked to him on the phone over the weekend after some GRC shenanigans, so uh, it's going to be fun to catch up with Steve. Always a great interview, and I got a feeling this one, Steve, is going to be even better today. So uh, all that coming up after the break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, and uh, I guess I forgot to throw in that that plug there for our good friends at Impact, but uh, being presented by Impact Race Products today. This is our GRC Curtain Call segment, and uh, bringing in our guest right now, my good friend Steve Arpin. How's everything going, Steve? Doing great. How are you guys doing today? I am doing good. Flying solo. My uh, partner in crime, Amy, she decided uh, life was good in Canada and she had to have a family reunion this week or something. So uh, there you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, life is always good in Canada, so we got to give her uh, we got to give her a, 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 a freebie on this one. Yeah. How often do you uh, How often do you get make your way back up to Canada? I mean, I know you're living in uh, North Carolina pretty much full time, but how often do you actually make it back home up there? 
honestly, not enough. Not yeah. enough. My whole family's up there too. I got the most incredible niece and nephew up there. And I, uh, I I wish I could get up there more often, but I'm from uh, from a real small part in Canada, and it's uh, it's tough to get airplane tickets up there. You got to book like six months in advance to get something under like seven or eight hundred bucks. So Holy crap. otherwise, it's it's just way too expensive and. You know the life of a race car driver. There's uh, there's no booking a plane ticket seven or eight months early. No, no, there there's not. Most of mine are like three days. If I get it like three days early, dude, I did good. You know what I mean? It's like Isn't that the truth. Yeah, if you can get two weeks out, you're like, oh man, I am really good here, you know. But and then you end up having to change it, you know. So it's like, well, then you get a little bit nervous. It's like, God, I must not have enough going on. If I could book this early, I better I better step it up, get back to work a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So here's another question. We'll just start off with the weird questions today, asking you about Canada and stuff like that. How often are you on a snowmobile anymore? I mean, this is where you got your start. When was the last time you were on a sled, buddy? <laughs> Oh, the last time I was on a sled, it was the first time I took my my now wife, then girlfriend, home for Christmas. Uh, the last time I took her home for Christmas in San Tuxo, so was 60 below the whole time. <clears throat> we we only had a few days, so it, like it was it was outrageously like bitterly cold. It was negative 60 with the wind chill the whole time we were up there, and uh, I made her go out on the snowmobile with me to go check things out and. Needless to say, we haven't been back for Christmas since then. It's, uh, we're just trying to get the whole family to come south for Christmas rather than going north. Yeah. But uh, we're going back again this winter, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. Have you? And, and yeah, we, at some point we got to talk GRC in this interview. But I was this is just popping into my head. <laughs> Have you seen talking about fun on snowmobiles? Levi Lavalley this last year, he had something he called Levi Lavalley's I five hundred. And it was at his compound there in Minnesota, and it was 500 laps around this little track. And the rule was is your sled couldn't cost more than $500. And uh, they had some old clapped-out jalopy sleds from Polaris, and uh, um, and it was like 500 laps of pure shenanigans around this track. And I sent him a message. I'm like, I so have to get in on this next year. And I don't even race snowmobiles, but it looked like a blast. Well, typically up north, we get to whether it be Minnesota, whether it be Canada, we, we typically have no problem creating all sorts of, like you call it, shenanigans. Yeah. So, I, I used to, rate, when I was racing for Polaris, I, I got to know Levi pretty decent. And you, you can definitely leave it to him to, to find his way into any any and all sorts of sh- shenanigans <laughs> possible. But, man, that does sound like fun, doesn't it? That's a, that I, would be, you could come up with some... I'd like to get like one of those old RXLs or something yeah. to go blasting around there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna text Levi after we get off air. I'm gonna be like, Steve Arpin and I we're in next year, dude. We're we're making it happen. <laughs> Let us know the dates. We're, Absol- we'll just go and absolutely. Yeah, we'll just I'm, all go I'm and committed. Yeah, we'll all just go and stay at Joe Duncan's house and tell Joe, hey, we're staying over, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is, I'd go there with you. We wouldn't end up making it to the race. I don't, I'd be afraid of that. Yeah, no. Well, if Joe Duncan I don't know was, where we're gonna find a snowmobile to prep down here in the south, though. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's me. I'm in Arizona, man. I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I have to have somebody out looking at uh, at heydays. I guess I don't know. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. So, anyways, we got to talk some uh, Red Bull Global Rallycross at some point today, dude. Yeah, that event. I know we talked on the phone Sunday. Um, first we got to talk about it's a crazy nail biter of a weekend for you. But that heat race, man. We we gotta we gotta address the the gorilla in the room. I, you know, the stop and go penalty. I mean, I, I'm an armchair quarterback when it comes to this, but I, I didn't see it warranted, especially after the speed and Erickson thing happened. But how are you feeling in the car? Because I saw some, I saw it clean, man. I just thought I saw commitment on your part, but I saw it as clean, buddy. Uh, so, so should we be honest or should we be politically correct here? Which way do we want to go about this? <laughs> it's, uh, honestly, I was confused as can be. I was sitting there watching those guys like we had a fast car, right? And you're right. It was it was kind of like the good old dirt racing days, and, and we had to go around the top side and find the cushion. Yeah. Right? Put it on the cushion and let her eat. And it was, uh, like, obviously Scott, and I, I believe it was – I don't know if it was Mitchell or Oliver. Both the cars were the same. But they were quick, and we uh, we got an awesome start. But a little bit sideways, we just had to carry the momentum around the top side. And, no, it was a, it was a totally, totally wrong penalty. 
But in hindsight, when you when you sit back and look at it, it's like we had JCB on for the weekend, incredible new partner, and, and they're, they're all they do is dig through things, right? So <laughs> if they're going to put us in the back and make us dig through the field, it's uh, I guess it was a, it was a fitting story the way it created the the, the story for the final. So it was uh, it was fun, but yeah, yeah the. The, the officiating, honestly, there is a. It, it's a. I, I gotta gotta give them credit. It is a tough sport to yeah, officiate. I agree. Like there is so much going on so fast, but they uh, they, they're gonna they're, they're gonna they're gonna lose a lot of fans, a lot of people if they keep on making 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 just completely absurd calls like that. Especially with like I, we were coming back hard, and I said that I'm just watching those two beat on each other up there. And then we were in the main, and I literally got my rear bumper beat off my car for Erickson to get around us for the for the lead. And I'm just sitting there, just kind of waiting. It's like, well, he's going to be in the penalty box for that if I got a penalty for my deal. But I don't know. I, I don't know what the what the deal is. Maybe I need to uh, maybe I need to get like Mike's Hard Lemonade back for a sponsor and bring <laughs> a couple cold beverages up to race control to try and get some some calls going my way for next time. That's never a bad idea, right? But. <laughs> No, it's but, always easy to make friends when you have alcohol as a sponsor. Uh, right? that, that is it's the always truth. Always easy to make friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the final man, I mean, you know, we'll talk about that for a second because uh, I mean, it sets us up to talk about the never another, the next question, which is you know the the overall season and the point standings, which you're doing amazing in. But I mean, that was a nail biter of a finish. I mean, you know, I gotta I gotta say, you, you know, it's kind of cool to say I was part of one of the closest finishes in GRC history, but then when you're on the second Second place side of it, it's of it, it's right? not exactly you know I, I guess it's not it's not as fun to talk about right. The, the worst part about this, so my wife and I drove home that night, and it was literally I was I thought I was going to be tired, but I was wide awake just because I was so pissed at myself over over that last drag race to the finish, and we we definitely I'm pretty confident we had the best car this weekend. Our our JCB car was awesome. Our guys worked their tails off to make that thing good for me and it drove like uh but let's just put it this way that car is so good that it can even make me look good right so yeah. it's got to be a pretty good car but i got inside of him there coming kind of going through turn nine after watching the replay and watching how much he beat on me to get by me i wish i would have been a little bit more aggressive going to turn nine i'm gonna have to learn that for the future if we don't get a penalty and uh I missed a shift coming from coming from turn nine to the checkered flag there. Oh. When I went to go from second to third, I didn't quite get it in gear, and I had to take a second little stab at it. And it's like I was a nose. I was probably .07 ahead of him, and I missed that shift, and I ended up .07 behind him. So it was it was a bummer. But hey, we're uh, we're a privateer team. We have no manufacturer support. You walk through the the, the paddock area there, and the, the Volkswagen, Honda, Subarus, they have. They have more people on their catering staff than we have running our whole team. So we uh, we should not be running the way we are. And that's just a true testament to, to the people we have on this program. And, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. Like we finished third or third in Memphis, second here. So so hopefully we'll go to Thompson and be able to do the do the three two one start to the season. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, and, and that being said, you guys have found that consistency. I mean, we, you know, going back to, uh, you know, a couple of years, you know, we, you know, Steve, you were kind of the dark horse. Well, that's not so much anymore. You know, you've kind of jumped in there and now you've got that consistency where you're getting those podiums. You're, you're doing what Scott and Tanner have done to be up front for the past couple of years. You know, you're just clicking it off. And even though they're not wins, you're still right there, right in the mix. And that's going to have you really excited through two rounds, looking at, you know, what it takes to win a GRC championship. And I mean, you guys are doing that right now. Absolutely. The honestly, the, the those Volkswagens that they have so much technology on the electronic side that they just watching the like the course previews and stuff when they drop the clutch, they just they just like drop that clutch. There's no effort to it whatsoever on the launches, and they 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 get off the line so good that they really don't have to deal with traffic that often. So the biggest challenge we have is, is getting off the line and getting in the race with them. And and nine times out of ten, when we can when we can be right there with them, get in the race with it, shake it up a little bit with them, where we have just as much of a shot to win as anyone. So we're uh, we're like I said, we're a little privateer team. We're doing everything we can. We got to work on the work on the electronic side of our program a little bit to try and uh, have a, have a little bit more driving aids, if you want to call it that, for for the launches and get a little bit more power to the ground, getting off the line. And it's 
we're, 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 we're right there. We're right there. The setup is great. The handling is great. The people are great. Our owners are great. We're attracting some of the best partners. JCB, Enios is back on this weekend. This is going to be their third year with us. Uh, Jacob Companies came back. All of our small partners that we're working with, with Yeti, G-Style Trucking, New Vision Graphics. Like, it, it's, we're, we're putting together, like, this great big family and having so much fun. There is one thing that we'll never be second at in the GRC, and I promise you this. This is a title we're going to carry every single week, every single year, is we're going to have more fun than anyone else in that paddock. So <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, you guys do have a lot of fun, man. It's always fun having you on air. <laughs> um, I appreciate you calling in, buddy. I know we'll talk soon, and uh, we, we need to do it more often. I always enjoy having you on air. Well, let's, uh, hopefully we can keep on doing good, and we'll make it somewhat of a, of a bi-weekly thing. All right, that works for me, buddy. That works for me for sure. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Steve. All right, buddy. Take care. Yeah, you too. All right, that was Steve Arpin, uh, podium finisher, Red Bull Global Rallycross. Solid, solid effort by those guys this weekend. One of my favorite people in motorsports. And uh, got to say, hey, Steve Arpin does wear one of those impact driving suits and helmets. So uh, so do I. So a little impact tie in there. But we're going to take a short break. we got Katie Osborne on the line after this here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports. The sound of the racetrack. And the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at CaseyHighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey highlights. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, and this week being presented by Impact Race Products right there in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'd like to welcome my next guest to the line, my good friend, 
Katie Osborne. How's everything going, Katie? <laughs> Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? It was good to see you, by the way, this weekend at Indy. But how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's so random. You and I could plan to meet up in Southern California or something, and it would never <laughs> happen. But we're in Indianapolis, and I see, like, I, I think I saw, I didn't know you got a gig with uh, with IndyCar, and I see a tweet pop up, and I'm like, well, that's Katie. And then I'm like, well, that's Katie here at Indy. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I got to text her. <laughs> <laughs> it was really random, but it was really awesome. And I think you're right because we literally could meet up in Southern California a lot faster than we thought we'd probably ever meet in Indianapolis. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but no, I, you know, I know we've had you on. I mean, shoot, talking torque, snow cross, working with auctions. Uh, let's talk a little bit about IndyCar and we'll talk a little bit about everything else here in a minute. But uh, out there, and um, man, it's. Uh, it was an exciting couple of days. I know the rain kind of threw a loop. I know, uh, you know, we had some things happen with Bourdais. It looked like he was going to be on the pole. But, um, man, it, it's, uh, you know, once again, Scott Dixon, he's up there. But uh, front row, solid. I mean, we got Alexander Rossi. We, You know, he's returning champ. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's shaping up to be one heck of a 101st Indy 500, Katie. I mean, the month of May, to be fair, is always, like, the most bipolar thing ever, whether it's the weather or what the expectations are. It's, like, literally you could plan for how you think it's going to go, and it's never going to go that way. And to me, that is just exactly what happened this month. <laughs> I mean, to your point, uh, first thoughts and prayers to Seb, who is uh, on his way to recovery. Um, yeah, that was an insane thing, and again, an unexpected, but someone can expect something like that to happen you know, at IMS, but you're right. I mean, with Scott Dixon on top, I think earlier on in the week, um, we kind of expected Scott to be quick. Um, I know actually myself and uh, a couple of others were talking about it, and I think, you know, we, I think he was the guy we thought would be on top um, after, you know, all said and done. But my goodness, there's just so much going on, and it's just so exciting, and it just makes me so happy to talk about it. Yeah, there's a ton, you know, and, and I, it's kind of crazy because I, I talked to, uh, you know, talking about Sebastian, I talked to him literally, I think about an hour before that whole incident happened. And he and I sat down for five minutes and like, you know, and he was saying, he says the team this year, he's like, I, I don't know how good our cars are. And he was very humble. And yeah. he's like, so he's like, they literally had that thing trimmed out and he, he was running on the ragged edge and he knew it. And, uh, you know, yeah. and it, it was one of those things where he was putting it all on the line because he wanted, he wanted that pole and he wanted to start up front, you yeah. know, and, and, and I think it just caught him. But, you know, I look at that and I go, you know, this, that's what's crazy about Indy because, you know, I'd say he's literally, I mean, he's been in Formula One. He's won all these champ car, you know, you know, championships. And it's one of the best open wheel drivers on the planet, you know, and for that to happen, it really kind of humbles you, you know, because it's like that's the guy you wouldn't think it would happen to. No doubt about it, but I think that's always, you know, I think we've seen over the past with IndyCar, it's a scary, scary sport, and um, these guys are true athletes, and that's something that I've I've always said ever since I ever got involved with IndyCar long, long, long ago. Um, these guys are athletes, and, it, and it, I don't know how you cut it, 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 they just are, and they are risking their lives to go out there, and they know it. Um, and to your point about being trim, you know, Scott Dixon in his quotes and comments after he got full, he was like, I knew we were trim, I thought we were too trim, you know. And, and I was actually talking to Alexander at that time that Scott was out running, and he just kept saying, wow, he's so trim, he's so trim. And that, obviously, it's that gamble of, you know, we'll put ourselves all the way out there to get it and try and find that balance. But on the other hand, you got to make sure that you, you keep all four, you know, wheels and tires on the ground. Yeah, it's 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 literally you know walking that fine line. It's like you know you you, you want to be trim enough you can compete, but then it's like oh, we we don't want to end up you know it's such a fine line and a give and take you know and it's a balancing act and you know once you nail it you do, but it's you know you just I don't know it's a, it's a tough call for everybody you know, but uh, yeah it was fun uh, fun qualifying weekend. I mean I, I'm excited for the race. This is my first time in Indianapolis Motor Speedway and I was saying earlier in the show I said you don't realize like you think you know motorsport and then you go you go to Indianapolis Motor Speedway the month of May. And I said it's a humbling yeah, it's experience. A different level. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It, it's humbling. That's that's the easiest way to put it, you know. And then the thing that I thought was cool is Fernando Alonso, right? You know, I've known about him for years. I'm a Formula One fan. I thought it was awesome he was coming over there. I'm like, I wonder what the reception's going to be in Indianapolis for this guy. Well, it's like this <laughs> circus that's following Alonso. I called it Circus de Alonso. Oh my it, God. It's crazy. It is. It, it, it is. You know what? And I think it's good overall. I mean, I know there's mixed opinions one way or the other. It's good for the sport, for the – press he's getting and man he is a popular guy but you gotta remember you know formula one was in indy and there were 
Formula One fans when it was running here in India, and they'd come out of the woodwork for it. And you know, IMS had had all of the European flair and vibes that you could imagine right in the heart of Indianapolis. And, um, you know, I think those people are definitely coming out to support. They're definitely excited to have, you know, someone to, to who really represents Formula One uh, at Indy. And, um, yeah, I think it's – I definitely think it's, it's creating a lot of buzz. And, man, he is a popular human. Yeah, well, and, and here's a question for you because, you know, you've grown up in, you know, in, you know, in and around, uh, you know, Indiana, obviously, but, um, you know, you've got a guy like that. So, you know, Rossi comes over from Formula One, comes back to the States, wins the Indy 500. You've got, now you've got Alonzo uh-huh. bowing uh-huh. out of uh-huh. Monaco to come. And, uh-huh. you know, what do you think? Do you think this is kind of opening that door where you're going to get guys? I mean, I look at a guy like Jensen Button who's filling in for Alonzo, but yeah. he's kind of out of a ride. Are we going to see him at Indy next year? I mean, do you think the doors are open now? Oh, of course. I think they're always open. And I think Alexander kind of kicked it off there last year to show that it's possible. And, you know, it, and, and then it's a, a competitive series to run in, and it's a, it's a good series to run in. And these are some of the best in the world. So, um, and I think Alonzo is probably, I, I haven't spoken to him about that particularly, but I imagine he's wondering, you know, his eyes are opening up to see that IndyCar racers really are, you know, interna- they're, they're top, top of the top. So yeah. um, I think it's opening the doors. Of course, Jensen Button, um, you know, we've, there's been conversations with him in World Rallycross, Rallycross, you know, Tennessee. Yeah. There's been all kinds of conversations to see where he would end up. Um, and, of course, you know, I'm sure I wouldn't be alone to say, welcome him to Indy. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, speaking of everything else, I mean, we could talk Indy here all day, but I know uh, right now, you know, Snowcross is wrapped up, but you're, uh, you know, you're also doing the torque thing, you know, you're running around, torque's kicked off. I mean, you know, how are you feeling about that? I mean, you know, I I love the torque series. I love the tracks that they go to. They're they're so unique and different than the stuff we see out here on the West Coast. Uh, You know, torque, it looks to be, uh, you know, it looks to me like it's it's growing, looks solid this year. I mean, what what are your uh, predictions for the rest of the year there, Katie? Well, you know, I, I this is my third season, one, two, three, I think three seasons with Torque now. And, you know, I've seen the ebb and flows of it. And I think, you know, with the new owners coming in, um, you know, last year and kind of getting some things situated, I think now is kind of that learning, you know, that growth, that learning that comes along with the second year. You got that first year out of the way and under the belt. And, um, yeah, I think people are excited about it. I know, you know, being at the track, it's just awesome. I think the whole off-road community, whether you're out racing out west, um, you know, or the Midwest really is where we mostly are, but it's off-road. It's some of the coolest racing that there is. It doesn't matter how you cut it, you know, what some of the new rules and regulations are, which I know that's a big topic of conversation in, in the torque world. Um, but, you know, it's off-road racing, and it's just rad. I mean, I, I, I've said this many a times before. I remember my first off-road race was Lake Elsinore, and um, I don't know, it was... 2012, maybe 11, 13, yeah. somewhere in there. And I remember looking at and watching these guys and these 900 horsepower trucks or whatever, thinking, oh my gosh, this is like real life racing. Like they have the elements, they have the jumps, they have the bumping and, and banging and, you know, rubbing is racing. And that kind of vibe really stands out in torque and, and then off road altogether again out west or in the Midwest. And I think it's just such a cool series that really has traction to grow. Um, we just got to, you know, I, I just keep keep killing it as much as we can and, and keep showing that it's a really fine, true form of racing. Yeah. Well, and, and you, you know, the thing too is, is especially about torque is like that fan base, you can't buy that. You can't <laughs> replicate that. You go to Cranon. I mean, it's like the snake pit at Indy. Like you, a different level. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's, you know what I mean? Like those people are diehards. I mean, you, you, you know, that's as authentic as it comes. You know what I mean? And, and when you have that on site, you know, at an event, I mean that, that right there, I mean that, that sells sponsorships. People want that crowd. They want those eyeballs. They want that demographic, you know? And, and I think that's one thing that Torque has done right. And it always has done right is, is, you know, they're on site, you know what I mean? At Cranon or Bark River. I mean, it, it's just insane. Yeah. Right. And this year, I think we're, we're, um, again, ERX is not new to Torque. It, you know, they, we introduced it last year up in Minnesota, but, um, the Carlton, family is supporting that they're a snowcross they were a snowcross family really focusing on also torque this year with their with the tracks that they've built and i know that we're excited to be there i think some of these tracks to your point crandon bark river um erx these these tracks are made for off-road racing and um and i think it, it, it sells itself in that way and i'm telling you like the first time if anyone listening if you haven't ever 
never been to an off-road race. <laughs> you got to go to Crandon. It's up in the middle of Wisconsin, and they're the friendliest town ever, and they just welcome everybody. But I'm telling you what, it's a different level, and it's just so amazing. I mean, it literally 100 miles an hour in that first turn. There's really nothing besides IMS. Uh, you know, there's it's the field. It's all the field. Yeah. Well, and talking about ERX, you know, I know that's a new one on the torque schedule. I've actually, I've actually been to that track, not at, uh, not at the, uh, not at the off-road event, but I was able to kind of check it out, uh, via snowmobile. Uh, I was up there for the snow bike yeah. qualifier and, uh, it's a beautiful facility. I know, uh, their shop really? there is insanely awesome, but I'm really excited. Uh, you know, I've seen it, you know, after a year, I'm, I'm hoping to see how this thing grows in, you know, year two, year three. Cause I think it's, it's really a hotbed, uh, there it's in a beautiful spot. And I think, uh, you know, and, and people know people in Minnesota, man, they support motorsports. It's crazy. You know, it's no yeah. doubt about it, whether it be winter or summer. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the coolest things I thought about the snow cross community is they all were so hands on. And we had people show up at those events just because it was like what they wanted to do. They all wanted to be out in the snow, and that to me was so cool. I mean, and, and the same thing we see in the summer with torque and off road. They 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 come out of the they come out. They want to support. They want to be a part of it. And it it is a it's a cool community up there for sure. Yeah. So uh, what's up next for you? Obviously, we've got uh, Indy five hundred coming up. Are you going to be out there this weekend? I know you're balancing your Indy car duties along with torque duties and and Meekum and and everything else you're doing. Uh, what's up <laughs> next for you? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm on like a six six week stint uh, on the road. I forget what color my my sheets on my bed are back home in California. <laughs> I have no idea. I I literally I I I just keep trying to find laundromats and places I can wash my clothes. Um, yeah, I'm balancing. I'll be in Indy um for through the through the 500. Then I bounce around over to uh, Nashville for Power Nation. Um, still shooting that and uh, an amazing show. If you haven't seen it, it's very automotive. It's no drama, all tech. It's, and these guys. I always want to make sure it's known that these guys, there's no ninja squad. These guys are working their butts off, and they happen to have a camera in front of their face, the guys who are on the show for Power Nation. A really fantastic show for them. Um, we always have some fun guests on and really amazing builds. Um, and then I move on to, yeah, and some more indie cars, some Meekum car auctions then after that, and then back to Torch stuff. So it's kind of a, a bit of a, a smorgasbord, but it's, it's kind of fun. And for me, I'd much rather... I'd much rather be busy, and I feel super. I've know I've said this on your show before too. I always feel so blessed to have work. I'm one of those people. I love going to going to work. I love uh, having a job. I love the people I work with in the, in, the, in our industry overall. Um, and yeah, I feel really hashtag blessed. If yeah. that's okay to say, you know, <laughs> for having work. I think it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, well, and you and I, I know we're running out of time, but, you know, like we talked when we had you on the podcast, you know, and kind of told your bigger story. You know, you, you've you been one where you've been out of work and you've had no money in the yeah. bank account. So you know what it's like to be on the other side. So it's like, you know, take it totally. when it's good because you never know when the tide's going to turn. <laughs> no, our industry, our industry is one of those wonky ones. You just never know. So you're right about that, and and I just yeah, it's a it's a it's an it's a fun time to be in motorsports. It's a fun time to be, um, in in the automotive world. There's a lot of cool things happening, and so I'm I'm glad to be a part of it for sure. Yeah, well, I appreciate you taking the time, Katie. Uh, you know, good luck at uh, the Indy 500 this weekend. I know I had no problem running the camera for you, so if you ever need a camera guy, you know who to call. And <laughs> yeah, by the way, guys. Jim Beaver can run a camera. <laughs> just so you know, when your camera camera person runs away from you, <laughs> just grab Jim Beaver. Yeah. He's got it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, happen, by the way. Yeah, it did happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll chat thanks, soon. Jim. Always a pleasure. All right. Thanks a lot, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, that was Katie Osborne. Definitely check her out. She's doing IndyCar digital pit reporting on Twitter. Uh, it's pretty amazing what she's doing. Actually, driver interviews and stuff like that. You can check it out. It's at KTM Osborne. Also, follow her on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you see her all over TV. She's just all over the place, and that's a good thing. But, uh, anyways, good friend of mine, Katie Osborne. Definitely give her a follow at KTM Osborne. We'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. 
the same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. at the Blue Water Resort and Casino, and they're giving away $76,000 in cash. Oh, yeah. The more we play, the more entries we can earn. Woohoo! Plus, they're giving away over $3,000 in cash every Saturday. Then on Saturday, June 24th, a guaranteed $43,000 in cash will be given away. See the club for details. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. All the hits of Boston and Sticks. Boz Sticks, a tribute to two great rock bands, live in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Don't miss David Victor, former lead singer of Boston, perform Boston and Sticks' greatest hits Saturday, May 27th. Door is open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 8. General admission tickets just $25. VIP only $40. Tickets on sale now. Get your tickets at the gift shop or online. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I got to tell you, I am all smiles today. This is the kind of radio that I like doing. Man, Katie Osborne, um, Steve Arpin. Man, what a fun interview with Steve, fun interview with Katie. Hey, we got a whole lot more, man. We still got Indy 500 champ. Alexander Rossi to come, Ryan B, your weekend winner. Man, we got Pro Motocross to talk about. We got a Dirtfish Rally Report. Um, we got to talk about, God, Ryan Dungey's retirement. We got Baja 500 to talk about, Lucas Soil results. Uh, we are, uh, I don't know how much you can cram in two hours, but we're sure trying to, to find out today. Um, but uh, thanks to all you guys for tuning in. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, with our good friends presenting this week's radio show and podcast, Impact Racing. Check them out at impactraceproducts.com. And uh, I am Jim Beaver. Give me a follow at Jim Beaver 15 on Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I love taking questions during the shows when we're live at Jim Beaver 15 on Twitter. That's probably the only place I'm going to see them. Um, but uh, a ton of fun today. Uh, if you've got questions, like I said, that Alexander Rossi interview, that is pre-taped. If you've got questions for me, or for Ryan Beat, our next guest up, uh, he's coming up in hour number two, definitely at Jim Beaver 15 I will get those questions asked either to myself or to Ryan Beat. Normally you can submit questions for Amy too, but uh, she's taking the day off on family vacation, and uh, she's earned it. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun today. We got a uh, slam-packed show and uh, it's only getting bigger. So uh, we're going to take a short break. We come back. we got a Dirt Fish Rally Report coming at you here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. 
if you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, we had some rally action coming at you this past weekend. This is your Dirt Fish Rally Report exclusively on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And uh, you can find out more information on Dirt Fish Rally at www.dirtfish.com. And uh, my boys and girls over there at Dirt Fish Rally School have been kind enough to give me a coupon code. Use the coupon code JBDIRTFISH. That'll give you 15% off any class at Dirt Fish Rally School. Coupon code JBDIRTFISH. And, uh, man, my friends at Dirtfish were in action at uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, in the Red Bull Global Rally Cross uh, race there in the GRC lights. We had Christian Brooks with the win. Connor Martell, my Dirtfish teammate there and helmeted athlete, he was second. And Gustavo Yakaman in third with a podium. Gustavo, uh, amazing to see that, to be honest with you. Um, first time in a lights car in competition, taking home a podium finish. I know we saw him at the Rally America event a year ago. I believe it was the one in New England. I actually, I um, you know, was able to uh, barbecue with him two or three nights in a row. Super nice guy, super talented road racer. Stoked to see him Red Bull GRC taking a podium finish. Man, let's hope there's more of Gustavo to come in Red Bull GRC. I could see him in a supercar, not like in a year from now, but like next weekend type of thing. He's that good. Stoked to see him out there. Um, Sebastian Erickson, as we talked about, edging out Steve Arpin, 0.07 seconds, edging him out for the first Honda win in Red Bull GRC. Steve Arpin in second, his second podium of the year. Scott Speed, Tanner Faust, Mitchell DeYoung uh, filling out uh, the podium and then fourth and fifth positions. Your driver's championship right now, uh, it is Connor Martell out front in the lights. Uh, big shout out to Dirtfish for that. Christian Brooks, Colin Braun, one, two, and three. And then in the supercars, man, it is tight. We got Scott Speed, 150 points. We've got Tanner Faust with 140, and Steve Arpin with 133. Man, it is shootout right now in Red Bull GRC for that points championship. Um, I, uh, it's all there is, man. It's tight. I'm excited to see the way this thing uh, shapes up later on. And then we also had some Rally America happening at uh, the Southern Ohio Forest Rally. We had Art Grushka taking the outright win and the open class win. Timothy Rooney in a super production car finishing up in second. Dave Wallingford in third, putting a two-wheel drive on the national podium. Amazing. Uh, we had uh, Nathan Usher in fourth. NLO winner uh, was Samir Kaltrick in uh, fifth outright. And then we had James Robinson um, in sixth, Steve Arosa seventh, Jesse Uvalli in eighth, Brad Morris and Gustavo Garrido uh, uh, rounding out your top ten. And that was your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. We'll be back after this. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup. 
sign up at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. All the hits of Boston and Sticks. Boz Sticks, a tribute to two great rock bands, live in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Don't miss David Victor, former lead singer of Boston, perform Boston and Sticks' greatest hits Saturday, May 27th. Door is open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 8. General admission tickets just $25. VIP only $40. Tickets on sale now. Get your tickets at the gift shop or online. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, Jim Beaver here, just get done with a Dirt Fish Rally Report. And uh, man, it's... uh, it has been one heck of a uh, amazing, epically amazing show so far, and uh, we got Alexander Rossi, Indy 500 champ, coming up next. We got Ryan Beat, your winner, uh, one of your pro light winners from the weekend, also a pole sitter at uh, Lucas Oil. That coming up um, in hour number two, and uh, this one, man, we got uh, got some pro moto to talk about, Baja 500 news. I want to get into some uh, Lucas Oil results brought to you by our good friends at General Tire, and uh, Lucas Oil in action down there in Baja. Man, if you uh, live in Baja, you live in Ensenada, I say that because we do online have a lot of listeners uh, from Baja that tune in for our off-road coverage. And uh, you guys have got to be uh, loving life right now, man. You got uh, Lucas Oil happening there at Estero Beach. Take a weekend off, and then you got the Baja 500 coming at you. Man, it's a, it's a stacked couple of weeks uh, for people in Ensenada. But, uh, J- but Lucas Oil, round three in action. And uh, the pro classes, we had UTV production. Uh, Brandon Arthur taking the win there been solid this year in the utv division buggy we had kevin mccullough um he needed a victory and uh, coming through taking the win there in pro buggy pro light it was brock higger and then pro two jeremy mcgrath and you got to be impressed by this team man they've uh um you know they've had some ups and downs the past couple years but it looks like they're on solid footing now always good to see jeremy mcgrath on top of the podium and then pro four kyle duke he had pretty much called out everybody on instagram said look Look, man, we didn't have the opening rounds we wanted. We're going back to the drawing board. You just watch. We're going to go to Baja and we're going to dominate. Well, I got to tell you, Kyle Duke put his money where his mouth was, came back pro four, swept the weekend with rounds three and four. That's right, three and four. So uh, Kyle Duke, man, sweeping the weekend in pro four. Solid effort by them. This new truck, obviously he's got it figured out now. Whatever happened there at the first weekends in Phoenix, uh, Kyle has it figured out. And uh, 
Uh, it's scary when the Duke has things figured out. Let's put it that way. So, uh, I don't know. Be watching him for the rest of this season because he could run the table, man. He's that good. Uh, UTV, rounds four. It was Miles Cheek with a win. Um, Darren Hardesty Jr. taking the pro buggy. Ryan Beat, our guest coming up here, uh, probably about 20 minutes out from that interview maybe, 15, 20 minutes out. Um, and then Bryce Menzies uh, taking the pro two victory. I've uh, been a while since we've had Mr. Menzies on top of the box, so uh, good luck, you know, good seeing uh, Bryce Menzies back on top of the box. He's battled through all kinds of stuff recently, you know what I mean, with injuries and stuff like that, and it's good to see him back in working condition and uh, uh, back to old Menzies' form. So I think uh, up next for him, obviously we're probably going to see him at the Baja 500 in his, uh, in his trophy truck. So uh, those were your uh, Lucas Oil results brought to you by our good friends at General Tire. And uh, don't forget, they've got that promotion going on right now by four general tire general tires between now and June 15th, and you get a $75 gift card. So you can go to General Tire's website, GeneralTire.com, for more information on that. And uh, that wraps up our Lucas Oil results. Don't forget, we got Ryan Beat coming up. So we've got lots more Lucas Oil talk. Um, and we mentioned the Baja 500 coming up, and uh, obviously we're about a week away from really starting to talk about the Baja 500 and the entry lists and things like that. But I got a press release yesterday. I go, I got to talk about this because this is just great. Um, so at the Indy 500, right, you got Ric Flair, and it's a big deal. Ric Flair is back at the Indy 500, and he's going to be at the Snake Pit and everything else. The so score, they announced their uh, grand marshals for the Baja 500. You know, one of them's Ivan Stewart. Uh, I love Ivan. I interviewed Ivan numerous times. We had him on air at the UTV World Championship. Legend, right? But he's like the grand marshal of all off-road races. So it doesn't move the needle anymore, right? Um, which, you know, he should be. He's one of the greatest of all time. But it, it's still, you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's not really breaking news when he's a grand marshal. <laughs> Score pulls a rabbit out of their hat. Ray Mysterio, Mr. 619, uh, one of the most legendary professional wrestlers ever, um, one of the smallest guys to ever win like the world championship on pro, pro wrestling in WWE. He is the grand marshal of the Baja 500. I go, you know, it's one of those things where you just scratch your head and you go, where does score come up with this? It was almost, you know, like Robin Leach in the mint 400. It's like, you just scratch your head and you go, really? Like really? But it's so, it's so far out of left field that I think it's so rad. So you got Ray Mysterio Jr., the grand marshal of the Baja 500, um, yeah, it, you know what? You, to each his own. Hopefully it's a na enough of a mainstream name that it gets people locked into the Baja 500 for score. I think that's got to be what they're hoping. And uh, obviously Ray being Hispanic, um, you know, people in Ensenada are going to come out of the woodwork to see this guy. Um, they don't care if you're Robbie Gordon. They're going to see Ray Mysterio, and he's the one going to get mobbed. So, um, yeah, pretty big news coming out of score, really. I mean, you know, you can get a chuckle at it, but it, it's a pretty big name to have at the Baja 500. 500 as a grand marshal. So my only hope is they throw him in an off-road vehicle for pre-running or something like that. So, um, you know, tip of the cap to you guys at score. Uh, I I'm saying, I I'll say it, you know, it's a, it's a pretty legit, uh, pretty legit get there. Um, other big news coming out. Uh, we had, uh, Ryan Dungey announcing his retirement and Amy Hood and I, <laughs> I don't, I can't apologize, but we, we ran, if you want to hear our opinions on this, go to the podcast last week. Cause we did the radio show. We talked about our predictions on, on Dungey and literally, literally five minutes after we get off air, they just, they're having a press conference on Ryan Dungey. And, uh, and we look so wrong. He announced his retirement and her and I are texting each other since as as we get off air and we're like, boy, did we call that wrong? Um, and that's the truth. So uh, we, we tried to redeem ourselves, and we talked about it in Project Action Podcast last week. You can go and check out it. Uh, we talked on it for 15, 20 minutes. So if you want to hear that in our commentary, go over to Project Action. But uh, Dungy did announce his retirement. I can't say that it's a complete shocker. I thought he had another year in him, but he did announce his retirement. And uh, props to him. He's going out. He's got a ton of money. He's one of the greatest riders of all time. He's uh, – He's going out on the top of his game with a championship. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got a ton of money. I mean, and do I really think that this is the last we'll ever see him in motorsports? 
Absolutely not. I don't think he's going to go way of Jeremy McGrath and go off road truck racing, but he's such so smart and he has such a mind about him for business. I could see him slotting into a position at KTM and, you know, in a managerial position or, you know, and overseeing their supercross program or something like that. He'll get signed a brand ambassador deal. I don't see him as another talking head on TV, but uh, I do see him staying in the sport in some, some position. And I think when you go and listen to that interview on uh, project action or that, that chat that Amy and I had, it uh, probably, you know, you'll probably, you know, I think we, we pretty much came to that conclusion. So, um, yeah, Ryan Dungey did announce his retirement, though. Big, big news. Uh, looking at uh, uh, motocross, though, he announced his retirement right before Pro Moto kicked off. We did have that at Hangtown, and uh, that was uh, going down. And uh, opening weekend, overall results, Zach Osborne going 1-1, one and one, taking that 250 victory at Alex Martin, 4-4, four and four, taking second. Plessinger, a 3-5. and a five. Ciancerulo, a 2-8 and an eight in the motos. He was in fourth, and Forkner... 11 and 2 uh taking home that 5th spot. Looking over at the 450s and it was Eli Tomac going 1 and 1, Marvin Muskeen going 2 and 2, Josh Grant 3 and 3. Then you had Wilson at 10 and 4 and Tickle at 7 and 4 in his moto finishes. So Tomac, man, he is uh I got to say at this point, Tomac's the favorite for the outdoor title. I mean, we're only one round in, but this dude's got a chip on his shoulders after Supercross. I would say right now um, it's uh, it's definitely a safe bet that uh, it's definitely a safe bet that Tomac takes home this title. Uh, You know, it's just, I don't know. It's going to be tough. I could see him just dominating outdoors. I mean, you know, he, you know, Marvin is is a very good outdoor rider, but uh, you know, and I can see him taking some uh, some some moto victories and uh, possibly uh, possibly an outright victory, you know, here or there this season. But I think Tomac, this dude, he is on a mission, and I think it's going to be the Eli Tomac show, um, you know, in uh, in outdoors in uh, 2017 that's for sure so uh yeah i don't know that kind of wraps up our news uh news for this week and our general tire lucas oil off-road results and uh we're going to take a short commercial break we come back we got alexander rossi we got an interview with him and then capping things off today we got that interview with ryan beat um coming at you as well so man it's a fun show hang tight we got a lot more coming at you on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
all the hits of Boston and Sticks. Boz Sticks, a tribute to two great rock bands, live in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Don't miss David Victor, former lead singer of Boston, perform Boston and Sticks' greatest hits Saturday, May 27th. Door is open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 8. General admission tickets just $25. VIP only $40. Tickets on sale now. Get your tickets at the gift shop or online. Hey guys, this is Chael Sun, and make sure you check out my podcast, You're Welcome. We talk about MMA, we talk about professional wrestling, politics, anything you need to know about today's top issues so that you can sound intelligent and you get them all from me, your humble host, America's favorite gangster. Make sure you check me out. You're Welcome with Chael Sun, and new episodes every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at Podcast One App. Apple Podcast and of course podcast1.com Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, oh, presented by Impact Race Products this week and uh, Jim Beaver here. And uh, get those questions in. We've got a few of them popping in for Ryan Beat. It's at Jim Beaver 15 on Twitter. If you want to ask Mr. Ryan Beat a question, he's up in the next segment after this one with Alexander Rossi. And, uh, man, lots of fun catching up with Alexander Rossi. We had him on air right after Race of Champions. And uh, it was kind of cool to catch up. We've got IndyCar kicking off now back out there at, uh, um, you know, at IMS and uh, able to catch up with him. Thanks to my friends at Andretti Autosport for uh, setting up this, uh, this interview. So, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of background noise and things like that. We were on a remote mic, literally sitting in some hospitality. There were some people bouncing in and out. So, obviously, like I said, we were live at event. Uh, but it was a solid interview with the 2016 Indy 500 champion. And uh, here it is. All right, catching up here, we've got uh, Alexander Rossi out here at the Indy 500. Uh, I don't know, qualifying weekend, how's, how's everything feeling, man? It's got to be a bit different vibe this year than it was last year. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's, I think everyone's just a little bit more excited, um, or at least I'm, I'm involved in the excitement a little bit more, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to qualifying, looking forward to the race, and, and looking forward to the, the activities that, that lead up to the race. Well, I know uh, you specifically, so going into last year, I mean, you know, you were a little bit of an unknown. You come in, you win the race. I, I drive around Indianapolis now, and, you know, literally I see the Napa IndyCar all over everything. I mean, that's got to be pretty exciting for you, you know, coming in and, uh, you know, kind of kind of get a bit of a target on your back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Obviously, I think Napa's quite happy about that as well. Um, so, no, it's it's all super positive. I, I was blown away with how um, big the post-race kind of media tour is because, I mean, it's legitimately a year, and, and I wasn't. I wasn't prepared for that, I don't think. Um, but it's it's been amazing. I've learned a, learned a lot about the championship, about this race, and and its importance to to motorsports. And um, you know, we're seeing the relevance of it of it this year um, with with Fernando coming and and um, skipping one of the the other crown jewels of, of motorsports and coming to race the 500. Well, and how is that? I mean, because you've been a guy, you've been over there, you've done Formula One, you know, and you come back here to the United States. And now, you know, you know, what you did at Indy has, you know, has a lot of, you know, to do with, I think, you know, Fernando being here. I mean, how does that feel for you to be able to take, the, you know, this race? You know, it, it's been a global race for a long time. People know about it, but now it's really people know about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's an incredibly positive thing. And the more interest that we can uh, generate, on a national level on a global level is only going to be better for us um in the long run so it's been it's been amazing the kind of reception that that the 2017 500 has had the 100th obviously had the anniversary kind of vibe to it the 101st um has has got a hook as well so i mean it's it's very cool to see the the race be able to do that year in and year out and um hopefully it continues for a very long time well, I know we, we caught up with you, I think it was right after Race of Champions, I had you on air, and we t- kind of talked about that experience, and you were talking about, you know, coming in here, and, and people almost to an extent, you know, last season, they they forgot you were an American because you spent so much time in, in Europe. I mean, how are you feeling coming into this year? Because, I mean, it feels like, you know, your fan base has just, uh, has just had to, you know, skyrocketed the past 12 months. It's definitely grown in the U.S., which is which is a very important and a good thing, and 
and something that, that we've worked very hard on the, the past 12 months and, and still there's a lot of work to do and we're doing a lot of things um, <clears throat> that are coming in the pipeline as, as early as next week to, to help with the fan engagement. So it's, it's been a big project and it's something that we've had to focus on because you're right, coming over in 2016, I'd say 75% of my fan base was European. Um, and I'd say now it's at, at least 50-50, if not a little bit uh, towards the U.S. So, uh, you know, looking at uh, things as a whole, I mean, obviously Indy 500, this is this is the big one, but we've also got an entire season, you know, and you were lucky enough, you know, you, things got put together with Andretti last year. You did the whole season, and now you know the tracks. You know what you're getting into. I mean, you got to be pretty excited for the rest of this season to, to make a run at the title. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's – it's a much easier start to this year um, than, than 2016, although, although you know we haven't gotten the results that we wanted, the pace of the cars there, and the team's working very well together, and, and that's all you can really ask for. Um, you know, if you're quick, then, then at one point the, the kind of chips will fall um, in your direction. So we just got to keep working day in and day out. Um, feel really good about this, this weekend. Um, the car's been really strong all month, and, and I think we have a good shot to go back to back. Well, and that being said, I mean, what kind of pressure are you feeling this year? I mean, last year there had to have been, you know, obviously you were fighting for, you know, fighting for a ride. But, uh, you know, this year, I mean, what kind of pressure are you feeling? I mean, after coming off a win, I mean, it's like, do you feel like people are expecting great things from you? Or is it just another race? For me, man, it's just another race. I mean, that's that's how I treat every race, no matter what it is. Uh, I think that obviously people will be paying more attention to what I'm doing. But I haven't really felt an increase of pressure just because I... I mean, I'll, you bring up the race of champions, right? I, I put as much pressure on myself to win that as I do this race. So um, it, it really doesn't change for me. Um, so you just have to go through the process and do what works for you. And and um, like I said, I feel really good about how the whole team's been working, how all six cars are running. And I think, uh, you know, if we play our cards right, we'll be in a really good shot to, to do it again. Well, and, and speaking of that, I mean, how's things like doing race of champions and stuff like that that's uh, been kind of fun to have those opportunities pop up now that you won the Indy 500? 100, yeah. It's been amazing. I mean, that was one of the highlights. I think the other highlight was was going to the ESPYs uh, in June and meeting LeBron and Kobe and Cam Newton and, I mean, sports idols of mine. Um, just to be in kind of the same room sharing an evening with them was, was pretty spectacular. So, you know, there's a lot of things that come from the 500, and, and um, you know, I've enjoyed all of it, and, and that makes the desire to win it again that much that much stronger. Well, and, and speaking of, you know, winning the Indy 500 again, I mean, obviously we've got some of the best drivers in the world here and, uh, you know, not saying that lightly, you know, what's, what's it going to take, you know, to, over the next, this weekend and next weekend to bring home another title? Um, you know, the first thing is the first kind of target is being in the fast nine. Um, although qualifying is not super important, it is, it is relevant because if you have a fast car, obviously May the Sunday, a week from Sunday is going to be a lot easier for you. There's also a lot of points on, on, on the table for the championship so qualifying is important so we need to be in the top nine um, and then from there you just you just take each lap at a time I mean we had a lot of things go against us last year and we still we still figured it out um, it'll be the same thing this year just just take it each lap and, and see what you got at the end of it well I gotta I gotta ask you here now uh, um, I know you got a new roommate Connor Daly he's a friend of mine I know you guys have a lot of fun and now I'm hearing about some uh, some 98 group text that you guys got going on uh, it's got to be uh, I've seen a, I, I had some breakfast with some guys from the team and it was uh, quite interesting today man it looks like you guys have a lot of fun away from the track yeah yeah for sure um, you know my my crew guys are amazing and we get along really well some of them are disgusting but um, it's all in good fun and and actually, there's a lot of pranks that, that go on during this month, um, and they all kind of kicked off last night. So uh, it, it's a good time, and it's a it's a great championship to be a part of. All of us are are pretty close, and it is it is one big family. And as much as we want to beat each other on track, um, there's a lot of respect um, that goes along with that off track, and and it's just a it's a cool thing to be a part of. All right, well, thanks a lot, Alexander. Good luck, you know, today and uh, this weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that was uh, your 2016 Indy 500 champ, Alexander Rossi. Great catching up with him, and uh, um, yeah, just a solid guy, man. His uh, his life experience in motorsport at such a young age is is pretty tremendous. Going over to Europe, getting that feel, coming back, and um, it's uh, it's actually really really cool. Um, you know what he's been able to accomplish and uh you know how he's approaching this weekend and obviously went and, and raced some rally cars at race of champions i thought that was uh that was pretty rad you know him being able to uh to knock that out 
And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, just uh, kind of fun to catch up with him and, uh, you know, kind of see, uh, you know, the direction he sees things heading. I uh, he ended up putting the car. Uh, this was right before they went out and qualified. He put it in the fast nine, and then he ended up putting the car uh, – um, in the uh, in the top three, so he's on the front row for the Indy 500. So uh, you know, I'll definitely be pulling for him. Uh, but uh, you know, that's kind of kind of you know, I know uh, <laughs> you know we, we don't cover a lot of IndyCar or anything on this radio show, and uh, had the opportunity to go out there thanks to my friends at Impact, and so uh, we cycled in a little IndyCar content today, and uh, uh, had a had a ton of fun with it. Um, I know we got, uh, if you like that, we got this week on Project Action over there, we got an entire packed episode. We got interviews with um, Graham Rahal, uh, more with Alexander Rossi. We got Connor Daly, um, Sebastian Bourdais. I'm just trying to go down the list. Zach Veach. I mean, I I caught up with, uh, I just went down the grid. Uh, You know, Hinchtown, we had uh, Hinchcliffe on. Um, You know, it was just uh, tremendously a ton of fun. And I think you guys are uh, definitely going to dig it. Uh, So this week on Project Project Action. It's kind of the Indy 500 episode presented by our good friends at Impact Racing. So, um, yeah, I think you guys are going to have uh, uh, really enjoy that, especially if you're uh, getting amped up for the Indy 500 and uh, you know everything that's uh, that's to come uh, to come with that, right? So, uh, yeah, that's coming at you on Project Action this week. And uh, man, I don't know uh, what are you guys watching this weekend on TV? Like seriously. Um, stoked to see what you guys are, are going to be watching on TV. I mean, God, we got, you know, they call it the biggest weekend in racing. Um, I know me, like I, I, I'm not super stoked on the Coke 600. I love the Indy 500. I love the Monaco Grand Prix. I'll probably get up early, watch those two events and then kind of get about on about my day, uh, and just kind of half watch uh, the Coke 600. But, uh, I don't know. Biggest weekend in racing. Tweet me at Jim 15. Let me know what you guys are watching. Uh, this weekend, I would love to know uh, what's going to be on your TV. Is there something live streaming? I'm sure Pro Moto, uh, Pro Motocross is going to be live streaming. I know a lot of the off-road drivers are listening in. You guys are probably going down to Baja and pre-run, start pre-running, finish up pre-running. Uh, I don't know. Lots, uh, lots happening in the next couple of weeks in motorsports. Man, we got STPR Rally coming up. Um, I mean, we got Formula Drift coming up. Uh, we've got a, uh, we got Red Bull GRC coming up, man. We got a, a lot of, a lot of motorsports the next couple of weeks. So, uh, let me know what you're watching this weekend. Biggest weekend in racing. What's on your TV dial or what's on your live stream? Like to hear from you at Jim Beaver 15. And we're going to take a short commercial break here on the down and dirty radio show powered by Polaris razor. We come back. We got Ryan beat on the line. And I lie, we, yeah, we got Ryan Beat on the line. I'm getting mixed up here on my, on my radio clock. All that coming at you here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. As certain as the sun rises and sets around the world, OTSFF Group is dedicated to providing flexible, comprehensive, and reliable transportation solutions. Air transportation, ocean freight, ground transportation, or a combination of services. We offer innovative and custom-built packages specifically designed to meet your transportation needs. OTSFF Group has been keeping shipments moving globally for nearly two decades. OTSFF Group, flexible logistics services designed for you. More information at OTSFF all the hits of Boston and Sticks. Boz Sticks, a tribute to two great rock bands. Live in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Don't miss David Victor, former lead singer of Boston, perform Boston and Sticks' greatest hits Saturday, May 27th. Door is open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 8. General admission tickets just $25. VIP only $40. Tickets on sale now. Get your tickets at the gift shop or online. Blue Water 
Resort and Casino. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready, 305-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. It's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, like to welcome the uh, well, the winner on the weekend, one of the Pro Light winners on the weekend in the Lucas Oil Off Road Racing Series down there in Ensenada at Estero Beach. How's everything going, Ryan? Beat. Good, man. Uh, just getting back, having a having a couple days off here, and uh, you know. After a good weekend, I mean, what else are you supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, right. How How is it, re- you know, we'll talk about the win and everything else, but got to ask you, because I haven't been down to uh, one of the short course races in, in in Estero Beach, but, I mean, people in Ensenada in that area, I mean, they eat, sleep, breathe off-road. They actually have, like, off-road racing in the newspaper and news, you know, in the daily news there in Ensenada and stuff. I mean, how has the reception for short course been down there in, uh, you know, in, in that area, you know, when you guys come down there? It has been absolutely awesome, man. I can't tell you how awesome the fans are down there. And, you know, you can totally tell that they eat, sleep, and breathe. They're diehard off-road fans. And, and, you know, the first year we went there, they didn't really, you know, know a lot of us racers. Now when I go down there, man, I have people wearing my shirts, hats, and I don't even know where they got them half the time, you know. So it's, <laughs> it's pretty humbling, and it's pretty cool to uh, to see what, uh, you know, how, how much these fans love off-road. It's, it's, it's an awesome experience. Yeah, it's and I, you know, I was just talking about that. I go, man, this is like a a massive couple of weeks for Ensenada. I mean, they've got you guys down there. Two weeks, we got the Baja Five Hundred. Uh, you know, it's like they're they're amped up. But it's cool to hear that. You know, because I mean, I know there's been racing in the past at Estero Beach, but it wasn't at this magnitude. You know what I mean? Lucas Springs. I mean, a, a you know a true premier championship there. And I was wondering, you know, the reception you got, but it sounds like it's just been off the hook. I mean, how how has the track been? I know that was something that. Uh, that, you know, last year, you know, it was like, ah, oh, we got to do some massaging to this thing. And how was it this year coming into year number two? Because I remember it was at last year, the whoop section was causing the pro lights just all kinds of trouble, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. They, uh, the Lucas Oil Off-Road uh, track crew has done an amazing job of turning that place into literally, it, before it was like racing in the Glamis Sanders. It <laughs> yeah. was just out of control. It was just rough on the trucks and rough on the drivers and it's kind of a not a fun thing and over the three years that they we've been there they've really tuned it up to where this last year you know has really been a good time the track is a uh, you know there's able to passes be made i mean it, it's it, they've brought in a lot of clay so it's really gotten the track really good so you know with that you know that rhythm section that's given so many of us pro light guys such a hard time for so long um, it still was tricky this year. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's a tough section. It's very technical. It's kind of a make it or break it deal that if you're not doing that section, you don't have that section down, you're going to be off the pace. But um, it's gotten better. The track is better. The fans are better. I mean, the whole experience about it is it's, it's awesome down there. Yeah, I know. I, it sounds like they've made it better. And now it sounds like now they brought the UTVs in. And it sounded like it was a squirrel fest through that whoop section and the UTVs. I saw some <laughs> video and some pictures. I'm like, oh, wow, Pro Light's got it figured out now. But the UTVs, man, those poor guys got the short end of the stick, you know, in that whoop section this year. Yeah, whoop section is gnarly. A lot of people, like, you stand from the side and you look at it and you're like, oh, my God, that's pathetic. But then you actually go rolling through them where you got to kind of jump into it. They're big. I mean, they're, you know, they're good three and a half, four foot tall, you know, r- woof. you got to rhythm through. And the first one's shorter than the second one. So it's almost like a step up. And, you know, as many of you know, you can't seat bounce a truck. So getting up over that first one, you know, you got to carry a lot of momentum into it. And 
if you weren't carrying the momentum in our DTE, <laughs> it was an early ride. I give those guys credit because they were going for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh yeah, UTV racing getting pretty uh pretty insane. I was stoked to see Lucas bring that back to the national series, but uh I mean, you guys in Pro Light, dude, your division, I you know, and and you know, it seems like a lot of people talk Pro 2, Pro 4 and this and that, but I look at Pro Light and I look at the racing that's going on there. And this, you know, this has got to be, as far as I'm concerned, the most competitive division in uh, in Lucas short course racing. I mean, it's, you know, there's a handful of you guys that can win any weekend. But then outside of that, there's still some guys that can sneak in there and possibly take a podium. I mean, it's, and you guys drive each other hard, man. Yeah, there's no run loss in pro life by any means. So it's, uh, it's a rough, rough class, but, you know, Everyone's speed is so close. That's what makes it tough, you know. It kind of it's what makes it so competitive, you know. You're looking at the lap times, and I mean, first to like eighth is like two tenths of a second, you know. When and when everyone's times are that close, you know, it just makes for carnage and makes for mayhem, and you know, like it's the beating and banging, and that's you know, kind of what makes the racing exciting and fun for the fans, you know. Yeah, well, and, you know, looking at your weekend, I know uh, round three, you and Haley Deegan got into it a bit, and it sounds like you kind of got punted into uh, the infield and, and things didn't come out so well in that race. But then on, on round four, it sounds like you and Jarrett Brooks had a pretty tough battle going on, and it sounds like he, he you know, he, he played you right, you know, and didn't get dirty on you. You know what I mean? You were able to walk away with a victory, you know. And, and when you're out front like that, do you ever feel like a sitting duck where the guy back there in second, you know, it's like, man, I, you know, if they really want to be dirty – you know, they can just punt me and it's all over. Do you ever feel like exactly. you're just there? That's what makes it hard, yeah. you know? Um, when you're sitting there out front, you're kind of, you have a target. So at any given time, they can just, just ruin your day. And it's one of those things that it really just comes down to respect. The guys that respect each other and respect what we've all done, we all race each other clean. Me and Jarrett went back and forth for, shoot, the whole second half of that race, and we never touched, we didn't drink paint not one time. So... You know, when you have that level of respect for each other, me and Joe are good buds. We hang out, we ride mountain bikes together all the time. But it's one of those things that when you respect each other, you have good, clean racing. Now, when people come in, they don't have respect for the other racers for whatever reason. That's when you start seeing the carnage and, you know, the mishaps there. But, you know, it is what it is. It's racing, and, and we're all out there to do a job. I mean, our job is to go out there and win races. And if, uh, you know, you see that a lot where people start getting impatient, they can't get by you, um, they punch you. And, a lot of the carnage comes from the restarts. You know, you'll have some, some goofy yellow flag halfway or three quarters away from your race, and it bunches up the guys. Well, what makes the carnage is that person behind you hasn't been able to pass you for 10 laps, right? They weren't able to catch you. So they think that here's their chance. Here's a, a restart. They're up on your bumper. They're going to make something happen. They usually end up overdriving the corner and driving through you and ruining your day, which sucks. But you know what? It's part of racing. You come back swinging and, uh, you uh you go out and prove them wrong the next day <laughs> yeah well and that's what i was going to ask you you know it, and it sounds like you already answered the question but it's like you know you they've got that you know mandatory caution midway to bunch everybody up and i was going to ask you man are you a fan or a foe of that you know because at some point like you know this past weekend it, it didn't benefit you at all but you know and then other times when you can be running around in fourth place and maybe there's a gap because of something that happened you know it bunches you back up and you got a shot at a win i mean so it's almost like a double-edged sword some races it can help some it can hurt right Exactly. It's, it's, it really is a double-edged sword. I'm not too big of a fan of it. I like just to get out and get going. Um, I'm usually one of those guys that takes me a couple laps to get in my groove, and once I get in my groove, I start moving forward. Um, for other people, they like the mandatory caution because they can dork off the first half and, yeah. and you know come charging back to the second half, which is, hey, it's just, you know, keeps your own. So it, uh, it works out good for everybody. Um, keeps the fans excited, that's for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, if the fans aren't excited and the TV's not good, I mean, we're not doing our job, so, um, you know, hey, if, it, if it's better for the sport, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Well, and I know, you know, this year, you know, Lucas Oil, you know, looking at the series as a whole, I mean, they, they've they tried to innovate, you know what I mean, and, and they're very selective when they bring on new venues, and it seems like, you know, the calendar's been, you know, quite the same for a while. But, you know, this year, you know, they throw in Lucas Oil Speedway. They've got a new track out there in, in Wheatland, Missouri. How how you feeling about going to the Midwest? Are you excited about the change-up and a new track and being able to, you know, take your program to, uh, to a different part of the country? I'm stoked, to be honest with you. I think this is a change that was needed a long time ago. Um, you know, for sponsors, you know, as, you know, much this is funded base of, of, of sponsors, and if your sponsors aren't getting nationwide exposure, what's the point of them only doing it in four states, you know, or five states? Uh, I think it's something that's been holding our, our sport back. 
Um, looking forward, hopefully, you know, with adding Missouri and Lucas Oil Stadium, um, hopefully we'll be able to add on a few more. You know, when you have events back east, back east is where trucks live. They're king, you know. They're, that, that's where it's at. So when you have 50,000 fans at Crandon and Park River and, you know, you get that kind of number, it, it's good for your sponsors. It's good for you. It's good for everybody. So hopefully with that Missouri Stadium, we can, you know, kind of broaden the, the spectrum of, of all the races, you know. Yeah, well, and and that was one of uh, that was one of actually the fan questions we had uh, sent in from uh, uh, from Twitter and uh, Ghost Rider. Um, she asked basically, you know, is there any chance that we see you this year or in the future uh, head back to Crandon and uh, you know do a one off over Labor Day? We're we're talking about it. It's uh, definitely a possibility. It's something I've wanted to do for the past couple of years, um, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get the uh, the support from all my sponsors to be able to do it, and and uh, hopefully uh, you know we can go have some fun and, and, and go kick some ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I don't think, you know, a lot of people, a lot of fans are like, Oh, why don't you just go to Cranon and stuff? And I don't think they understand from a race team standpoint, the finances that it actually costs. I mean, just in travel costs to move your whole operation, <laughs> you know, you, you know, across country, 2000 plus miles. I mean, it, it's a very, you know, financially, you know, you know, it, it costs a lot financially. And then they go, Oh, but there's a big purse. And I, and I look at the purse and go, yeah. well, maybe you break even at the end of the weekend then, you know, if you win, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's the, definitely, it's not something you're going to get rich off of, but it, uh, you know, what you go back to Cranon for is, you know, the, the notoriety of Cranon. you go win at the big house, you win at Cranon. That's like winning the, the Daytona 500, you know, there are so many fans there and, the, and, and that's where, you know, it's more or less for the love of the sport at that point. When you go back to that race, it's not about winning money because the purse really isn't that big in what you spend. You know, you look at when you go 2,000 miles across the country and you got two semis or a semi in a motorhome and you got 10 guys traveling that far. I mean, your your travel expenses are up over, you know, $15,000 as it is. So at that point, you're not going for the money. You're going for the, the notoriety and, and the bragging rights of, I just want Crandon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, what's up next for you? Obviously, you got the Lucas Oil Series this year. I mean, we're talking about Crandon a bit, but uh, anything else in the, in the hopper for you? I mean, you know, any chance we see you uh, hop into a Pro 2, Pro 4 at some point? I know you've been a guy that's bounced uh, in and out of some different divisions when somebody needs a wheelman. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's one of those things that we've been working on putting a Pro 2 package together for a while now. Um, we just kind of haven't. I haven't made the jump yet, to be honest with you. I'm pretty happy in pro light and pretty comfortable. Um, I got a solid program. I got a solid group of guys. And anytime you jump up a level, you start that process all over. You start, you know, you start from the bottom again. So if I'm going to jump up, you know, I want to make sure that I go in prepared. I don't want to go out there and run fifth or sixth or, you know, seventh. I want to go out and, and battle for wins like I am in pro light. So um, I really want to do my homework. I want to have the right crew, the right truck. It, it all plays into, into fact there. So, you know, we'll see what uh, what what comes up with the rest of this year and what I can come up with for next year. Yeah, well, and, and here's a question because I really don't know. I mean, uh, once you have the truck, I mean, I know a Pro True truck is more expensive up front, you know what I mean, than a Pro Light. But you guys already have the program. You've got the team members. You know, what are the running costs? What's the difference in a Pro Two and a Pro Light program? Because obviously, I mean, it's a different sell to sponsors because I know it costs more, but how much more does it cost? I mean, we're talking, you know, another twenty five grand a weekend to run a Pro Two. I mean, or is it pretty pretty close in line? I would, uh, you know, I mean, when you look at it in the fact of, okay, Pro Light Motor is 20 grand, you look at a Pro 2 motor, it's 60 grand. You know, the new fuel injection, yeah. wham, bam, you know, Pro 2 engine is 60 grand. Then you have a trans that, you know, is 15,000 bucks for the for the Pro 2, where, you know, my Pro Light trans is 4 grand. So, um, you know, the, the numbers exponentially add up a lot quicker. You know, rearing gears, you know, rearing housing, hubs, yeah. brakes, tires, all that stuff exponentially goes up so i mean it, with the crew and the travel and the semi and, and all that stuff already being there um i would think you probably need another 25 to thirty-five thousand a weekend to, to 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 run one right you know yeah yeah which is yeah it's you know and i, I just start looking at now things like on the tight side you know yeah <laughs> yeah and, and you know some of these guys that are that are racing you know you're going up against mccachran and menzies you got to be bringing your a game you know it's uh you don't want to do it on a shoestring budget you know no, no, you know, they're coming with their A game, you know, those guys are champions for a reason. They've done well, they got tons of experience, they got tons of knowledge. Um, those are the guys, those are the class act guys, you know, the field. So if you're gonna go up and play with the big dogs, you better 
you would be carrying a big punch behind you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to call in, my friend. Uh, you know, congrats on the win. You know, we're always pulling for you each and every weekend, and, uh, you know, we'll definitely uh, have to chat soon. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. We, uh, we're we looking for, for some uh, fun to go have the rest of this year. And uh, to be honest with you, if there's any of you guys that got uh, some desert racing going on with the Razors, let me know. Um, trying to trying to start having some fun and branch out outside of just short course and would like to kind of start in some Razor stuff. So uh, hit me up. Let me know. Um, Instagram at RyanBeat51. And uh, let's, let's go have some fun. All right. Sounds good, my friend. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Take it easy, buddy. Cool, man. All Thanks. right. Bye. All right, that was Ryan Beat, your uh, Pro Light winner, and one of the Pro Light winners from the weekend in the Lucas Oil Off Road Racing Series. We're going to take a short break. We come back, wrapping things up here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race ready off road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready, 305-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500 or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, just wrapping things up on one epic, epic show that was presented by our good friends at Impact Race Products. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com. But uh, lots of fun today. Big shout-out to my boy Steve Arpin on the podium and his run he's had so far in Red Bull Global Rallycross. Katie Osborne. Always a pleasure to kept, catch up with her. Her and I had, did some epic radio back in the GRC days together, and uh, so proud to see uh, you know how far her career has taken her, and uh, lots of fun catching up with her. Uh, Alexander Rossi, I know he was uh, posting up some stuff on Instagram about the interview on Katie Osborne's uh, – uh, Instagram feed, but uh, shout out to him and my friends at Andretti for uh, organizing that. Ryan Beat, always a pleasure, man. My Gibson Exhaust uh, teammate there. 
Um, but uh, yeah, always uh, always a fun time catching up with. Um, I don't know, with all my friends in motorsport, man, the, the family just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And uh, thanks to all you guys for tuning in each and every week. Couldn't do it without you. Thanks to everybody that listens to Project Action as well. Don't forget to rate and review and subscribe to that one on iTunes. Same thing with the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And, uh, you know, if you like what you're hearing, man, sh- tell your friends. Tell your friends about us. Share the social media posts. Retweet. Share on Facebook. Like. Tag. Do whatever you got to do. Get the word out, man. We're just trying to grow this thing. And, um, if you've got any any events you'd like us to cover, anything you want us to talk about, guests you want to hear on air, always shoot me a Twitter a message, Instagram, email, whatever, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, get them on air. Big thanks to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Casey Highlights, Gibson Exhaust, Dirt Fish, Impact, OTSFF, Optimus Starters, Terracross, and the Blue Water Resort and Casino. I'm Jim Beaver. It's at Jim Beaver 15. My co-host, who wasn't here today, Amy Hood. It's at Amy Hood 71. And don't forget that coupon code at Dirtfish Rally School is JB Dirtfish. And don't forget about uh, Warfighter Made and use that hashtag RazorLife for $5 to go to our friends at Warfighter Made now through the weekend. Um, I want to be tuned into TV this weekend, biggest weekend in racing. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I want to hear about it at Jim Beaver 15 on Twitter. We got a lot to talk about next week. We come back, uh, you know, it's, uh, man, it's going to be a wild weekend. So uh, be safe. As always, game on. 